In this video, we are going to cover the particle or cascade system in Unreal Engine 4. I'll give you an overview of it. It is a very, very complex and deep system, so we're not going to go into too much detail. And then we'll show how to put a particle in a blueprint and hook it up. Let's get started. Particles. Particles are those pretty splashy little effects when you do stuff. Explosions, sparks, even stuff as simple as blood splatters and things like that. By default, since we're using the starter content, we actually have a few particles that the game comes with. Let's go ahead and drop out to the ceiling and drop a particle into our scene. These are pretty simple. You can just take and drag and drop and you'll see a particle working. Assuming you've turned back on real time. You shut off real time, of course. Like I mentioned, your particle's not going to update. Turn particles back on, and we have a little bit of smoke. We have stuff like fire and sparks. We're actually going to use the sparks. And you notice they all react differently. They all have different settings. Let's go ahead and open up one like our Steam. When we open it up, we will find our Cascade Particle Editor. This is scheduled to be replaced at some point, but for now we have the Cascade. The basic setup of this is you have a preview in the top left. You have your details for individual modules. You have all of your modules under emitters, and then you have a curve editor as needed. There's a ton of other options up here, but basically the emitters section is what drives your particles. This is a simple particle. It has one emitter. You have what's going to be emitted, the material, Every particle uses a material to determine what you're going to see. So, like I said earlier, materials are used for a lot of different things. Not necessarily for texturing stuff, but you're basically texturing your particle. So in this case, if we take this material and open it up, you have this little monstrosity, which is taking a cloud texture sample and then doing some magic on it, and basically turning it into this little set of clouds you see here and then based on those clouds that you see here it does some other magic based on not magic but some other processing using a sub image module color over life and it makes this little basically smoke effect out of a 2d flat texture out of a um uh, it it, uh, they call it flip book in here but basically out of a texture sheet a bunch of smaller images turned into an animation now what I mean by modules are each of these things are a different module. They control different things. They're not required. The only one that's required is going to be our required. That's why it's called required. If you right click, you have access to all of the other modules. And there is a ton here controlling tons of different things. Your color, orbiting, rotation, size, spawn. If it's going to basically be in the shape of a sphere or a cube, and just a ton of settings. If I open up something more complex, like a fire, you're gonna find you have multiple emitters with multiple modules. This one, for example, you have a few that contain just the flames. You have one for smoke, embers, sparks, and distortion. And what we can do is we could actually disable all of these. And you're going to see each individual one. Like here's just this one emitter. And if we add in this one, here's just this one emitter. If we add them together, we get more of an effect. We could add in smoke to it. Now you see a little bit of smoke coming off. Some embers sparking up. Some bigger sparks coming down physically. And then distortion, which is a little heat uh, effect. You can also solo any of these. We just want to see our embers. For ease of use the particle system is huge and complex and this is not something we're going to cover in detail we're just going to cover what consists of a particle and maybe how we'd use some pre-built ones in the game there's a ton of resources out there on particles and if you're a visual effects artist you might find there's is some awesome stuff you could build in here now what we're going to want to do is take our particles and we're going to integrate it into our door blueprint so we can turn it on or off and so it gives it kind of like a really cool broken effect because it's broken until we click on our button. So let's open up our door and let's add in a particle effect. Let's go ahead and go to our door right here. 
add component, we'll type in particle, and we'll get a particle system. Now you notice here it says P fire. If I was to click on this, it's going to add the fire right in. That's because I had the particle effect for fire selected. You'll notice, you may have noticed, and hopefully you'll continue to notice, a lot of the stuff Unreal does is context sensitive. If you're adding a sound and you have a sound selected, it's going to automatically fill that in. And it's going to do that with pretty much everything, as you can see. Now we don't want the fire. We wanted a different one. So let me go ahead and change the particle fire to particle spikes. Particle sparks. And we have our little spark effect here. Now this is using GPU particles, and it's using physics, basically. If I was to drag this up to here, which is, this is going to be my goal once I move it. Let's go ahead and move it out a little bit, and we'll put it right here. And we'll go ahead and compile, and we'll look at it on our map. And you'll notice these sparks are bouncing off of the floor. And they're actually technically bouncing off of the wall behind it and all those other parts. It's using a little bit of physical interaction. And that's part of the GPU sprites and some of the settings you can do. I think it looks kind of cool. It's also using gravity because if I was to take this and if you notice it's shooting up a little bit. Now let me zoom in and do this. It's shooting up and then gravity is taking effect. If I was to rotate this, let's say sideways, 90 degrees, you'll notice it's now basically shooting out. If I was to rotate another 90, it's going to shoot straight down. So what I want is a 90 degrees like this, and I'm going to put it boop, right on the top like this and make it look kind of like the door is sparking and having an issue. If we were to check this out, something like that. Yeah, you know, no, nothing super fancy. It's, it's actually, let's see if I can, uh, let's see, move it out a little bit. Let's see what happens if we do that. And of course, since it's a blueprint, yeah, you know what? Why not? That looks good now. We can go over here. We can check it out in game. And you'll notice it's got this nice little effect, kind of like it's not working. Also, because it's interacting, it's bouncing off of my character. It's He's got a little blue glow. It, it's a kind of a cool little effect. Nothing fancy. I just wanted a little bit of, uh, of a more of an indicator that there's something broken with the door. Now, we don't want this always running. Let's go back into play and step on my button and you'll notice the door is going to open and it's going to keep playing and we don't really want that so back to our blueprints here's our door we have a particle let's change this one to sparks let's go ahead and go into our event graph and we're going to want to shut it off when our door is open or hmm Let's set it off when we fix the door. So we're going to put it over here. We're going to open the door, shut the sparks off, and then animate the door. So we'll take our sparks, and we're going to destroy component. We'll go ahead and go like this. Play from start. And you know what? Is it that easy? Let's see. There we go. It's that simple. We are opening the door. When the trigger tells us to open the door, we're destroying a component. That component is our sparks. And then we're opening, physically doing the triggering animation. We'll go back over here. Oh, there's a problem. Goes down, plays a sound, spark shut off, doors opens up. That's it. It's as simple as that. Particles are just another actor, another component. They all just depend on how you're using it inside of your scene. And you can go ahead and adjust things however you want. Now, in terms of adjusting, I'm going to take my steam up. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I have smoke, right? Uh, you know what? Let's take our smoke. We're going to take our smoke effect here, and we're going to put it outside of here because, okay, you know what? Let's delete that. Let's go into here. We'll put our smoke right here so that way I can easily move it. We're going to move it outside of our window so we get kind of like a smoke effect. And if you look, it looks kind of like a fire. Maybe that's a reason why we need to get out of here, because it's going to be on fire. It's not quite what we want. It's a little bit not thick enough. So let's make it bigger. Why not? Let's make it 3 by 3 by 3 for a scale. You notice our smoke goes up a little bit. Ooh, there we go. And we have our smoke actually coming in like that. Look at that. 
Oh, that's that's horrible. I think we're gonna look at that. Oh, let's see. But see, it's coming through for there. We're getting getting a bit too much of an. Whoa, that's huge. Oh, ah, uh, probably because I put thirty. Yeah, that would do it, wouldn't it? Okay, let's try that again with a three instead of a thirty. There we go. We get a little bit of a smoke effect, kind of like coming through the window. Yeah, all simple, simple as that. We'll go with that. And that is going to basically wrap up our coverage of particles. They're nice, useful things. There is a robust particle editor called Cascade built in the system. What we're going to move on to next is creating an outside. Now that we have the ability to go out, we're going to work on landscapes. We're going to add a basic landscape, maybe move it around a little bit, learn some basics, add some foliage, and give something to happen when we're outside.